Hi guys, what's up? It's Alex here, and today we are here with my review of MX vs ATV Supercross Encore. I think that's the right title. Yes, I, yeah, it is the right title. Yes, such a long title, I sort of normally forget actually what it's actually called, but. This is my little review of it here today. I obviously haven't posted another part of the career mode. I'll get into why a bit later, but I wanted to let you guys know about this game because I'm sure not everyone who wants to buy this game has bought it yet. And I'm just going to talk about my sort of experience of the game so far. Well, you guys know that I'm not really into this sort of genre of sort of racing games. I normally stick to sort of car racing games. You know, things like Formula One and things on a PC like R Factor. They're the sort of games I normally play. I don't normally play motorbike games apart from the MotoGP game. So when I picked up this, it was a bit of a shock to the system. Obviously, I played MXGP about a year ago, which I quite enjoyed actually. But this game here, something just something isn't quite there to make it as fun as MXGP in my opinion. It's still a good game if you enjoy this sort of thing, but it does have issues. For example, the optimization is pretty bad. Like, really quite bad. I mean, on certain tracks, you're going around at probably about 10 or 15 FPS, which is a bit disrespectful to the people that actually bought this game that that has been optimized that badly for PS4. Like, it's kind of unplayable. No, well, not completely unplayable, but... It is quite bad in a lot of situations, well not a lot, it's quite bad in some situations, there we go, it's quite bad in some situations on some tracks, especially the tracks with lots of trees, it really is quite bad in terms of the frame rate being really bad and it's kind of hard to get around that in some instances, but then a track like this, it looks really good doesn't it, the graphics aren't actually amazing, but the whole stadium and everything looks pretty cool. You can see all the sponsors, the tracks designed quite well. It looks pretty decent. The whole stadium, you can see the crowd, the flashing uh, of the photographs being taken, all that sort of stuff. The detail's pretty decent, I'm not going to lie. But it's just the optimization. It always comes back to that, for me at least. If it's not optimized right, it can't be an amazing game in total because that sort of. One of the, the biggest biggest issues when you get onto the game, straight away you're facing that issue of the game not being like running at like 60 FPS or at least even 30 FPS. 30 FPS is probably the minimum I'd want from a racing game. But you know, from time to time, it does perfectly fine. It does perfectly fine. There's no sort of lagging or anything at all. But it's just those one or two instances on some of these tracks which have a lot of trees, for example, where it's just nearly unplayable, which it's kind of tough because I know a lot of people out there really do enjoy these sort of games and you know the MX vs ATV is obviously a massive franchise one I haven't really sort of delved into over my gaming career <laughs> if you call it a career you know what I mean your gaming life I haven't really delved into this sort of game and it sort of makes me not want to go and buy another one of these games just because of this I mean I know a lot of people in the past I've loved these games. Like, I think I get a couple of comments on the the career mode video saying, on like PS2 and whatever, this was an amazing, amazing game for the time. But it looks like they haven't really got with the times in this instance. The I think you know it came out in early access on Steam on PC, and I thought that was a, that, that's a normally a golden opportunity. I and mean, obviously they take the people's money when it you know when the game is completely broken in a way. Uh, but it's a great sort of circumstance to just get the game fixed before it comes out but it obviously hasn't been quite fixed because there wasn't any sort of thing for Xbox One and PS4 for like an early access version so I think for PC it's probably not that bad but for console you're going to have to always look back to that optimization being not that great and I'm sorry to keep going back to that but it all sort of ends up being about that in the end I mean it's kind of hard to enjoy it when you're going around about 10 FPS but you know, something I've also seen in terms of other people, I've seen the comments, I've looked at forums and other people's reviews of the game just to give you sort of an overall opinion of this game. Lots of people are saying the physics aren't that great on this game and I've got to say, they're not as good as MXGP. MXGP isn't exactly realistic, but it is better than this. Like, it, this is sort of, in a way, too easy in some instances and I'm sure some people don't like that. I mean, for me, it's still a challenge because I'm not very good at it. Like, this is one of the first few times I've played this game and obviously for me, it's still a bit of a challenge just to get used to it all and you can see I'm off the track pulling off stupid moves all the time but for people that are a bit more experienced in the game, people have played these sort of games in the past, the 
obviously physics aren't as great as they were before and as well as they could be for example I mean people have been saying from the forums I've looked at that the previous games have been a lot better physics wise and it, they, you know, I, I saw one particular comment saying that it's sort of been dumbed down for like <laughs> like five year olds is what the comments said to make it just really easy physics for everyone to pick up and play and I'm not against that from time to time having a game where it's sort of easy to pick up and play is good but I always think like in MotoGP for example MotoGP 2015 and the previous games there's an option to put on simulation settings and I haven't seen one on here but maybe there is I don't know but you know, having that option just to go into simulation settings, like turning turning off the assists or something, would be making it a whole lot better for some people. And maybe even on pro physics, it's not that great from some of the things I've also seen on the forums. But overall, guys, this game isn't expensive, so don't you know, don't let that sort of put you off. It's not like a fifty-pound game and it's got all these problems. It's sort of a fifteen, twenty-pound game and it's got some problems, which I think, even though you shouldn't really have to accept it. At that sort of price, I'm willing to accept more sort of problems with the game than whether it was a 60 or 50 pound title and it came out like this. I, I just wouldn't accept that whatsoever. I mean, personally, I'm not going to be posting any more career mode on this channel of this game. I don't really enjoy it enough to keep going with it. I mean, it was worth the experience to buy the game and just see how everyone enjoyed it. I mean, I think people did enjoy it on the channel, but. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I can make a really funny, you know, fun series out of it. Maybe when MXGP2 comes out, I think ne early next year, I might give that a go and see, you know, whether that's like the first MXGP game which I really enjoyed. But for me, I can't really keep this series going because I'm just not enjoying it enough, and I think I have to enjoy it to to make a good series out of it. So overall, for me personally, I'd probably only give this game about a five out of ten, and it's not because I think it's well. It's not because it's like a terrible game for in general, but it's just that for me, I don't particularly enjoy it. Something about it isn't as exciting as MXGP, the first game was, and also I have the problems with the optimizations. The graphics in some instances aren't very good, like some of the sort of forest stages. I feel that the trees are awful quality, and then it lags it out, so it's like a double whammy in that instance. But yeah, physics aren't perfect, but I'm sure some people are very happy with them. But overall, guys, it's it's not a terrible game. If you are really into these sort of games, I'm sure it's worth picking it up. I mean, as I said, it's only about £15. It's probably going to go even cheaper soon. So, you know, if you want to just have a game that you'll get maybe 20 hours out of, definitely worth picking it up. But if you're like me, you're not really into this sort of whole series of games, probably not worth picking it up, even just for an experiment, really, just because... Of the physics, the optimization, and all of that. So yeah, I'm sure I've rambled on long enough, guys. I'm pro I'll probably leave a link in the description to some sort of people's proper reviews that play a lot more MXGP, not MXG, play a lot more of these sort of games than me. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching that first part of the career mode. I appreciate the people that did come and tune in, but I won't be doing it anymore, unfortunately, just because I'm not enjoying it enough to really make it a great series. So yeah, that is it. Thank you for watching. I said five out of ten is probably my rating. Probably. 6 or 7 out of 10 maybe if you're a big fan of the series. But that's it guys. Thank you for watching. It's been Axe Mad here. Goodbye.